Hey guys, it's Derek here with On the Horizon Podcast, and this week we're going to be talking to Zach May with Reloading Quest again. We're going to be answering some reloading questions. We're going to talk about the 22 Creedmoor, the 7 PRC, and some of the experiences we had in Africa. But before I get to that, if you haven't seen it yet, check out our pumpkin videos. We did a pumpkin power factor and a pumpkin carving video um, this last couple weeks back, and we challenge you guys to do a pumpkin carving with your 22 Creedmoor. And we want to announce the winner of that. That winner of the challenge is going to be Brody Oldfield. So, Brody, we appreciate the pictures. We'll share right here some of your video and some of your pictures of your pumpkin carving with your 22 Creedmoor. We'll be reaching out and getting you that case of free Hornady 22 Creedmoor ammunition. We appreciate it, guys. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Here we go. Well, how's everything been since Africa, dude? Uh, it's been good. It's been busy. Um, I find myself wanting to go back every day. <laughs> um, Are you like, is your feed full of all African stuff now? Pretty much, yeah. And it's pretty crazy, too, because, like, I, you know, I did a couple, you know, did bear hunting when I got back, and I did some blacktail oh, hunting. Cool. And I'm just like, man, this just, <laughs> this does not compare. I might be a little ruined. So, You're ruined. Yeah. Did you get a blacktail? No, man. Oh, I man all i saw was dough it was just terrible this it was too warm there was nothing moving at yeah. all well it's, it's been interesting to see i think just in general this whole hunting season has been a little bit warmer we we ended up uh, on an elk hunt and ended up getting an elk and a mule deer uh in october but we were high altitude and usually at a time where it had been we'd been snowed out yeah. um and the, the bugling didn't really start till about mid the first week of rifle season, which I've never had before. Really? So. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. Huh. Didn't see any bear, though. Did you see any bear? Did you get a bear this year? I saw, saw one. My buddy did shoot a bear with 7 PRC. Nice. So, yeah, nice. he, he did get a bear. It's not very big, but a bear's a bear. Um, so he <laughs> shot one, and I did see one, but I was like, ah, it's like 800 yards. I hit it. It's going to go in the brush. I don't feel like tracking it. I was like, mm, that's a little further than I'm, I'm comfortable with on it. So now is that Western Washington or Eastern? That Washington? was Western. Yep. Yeah. And it, if it was Eastern, I would have done it because it wouldn't have been so brushy, but yeah, it was, yeah. it was Western. So that's awesome. But, yeah. Well, tell me a little bit when we get rolling here, tell me a little bit about, um, this giant mule deer, your buddy shot with the 22 Creed. Oh yeah. In Africa, I'm not in Africa in uh, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. That was, actually that was, um, that was, I think just over the border of Texas. I, I guess it was in New, in New Mexico. So yeah, oh, nice. um, that was, I think the, the last day and, uh, yeah, him and his son both got, did I send you pictures of the second one? No, I didn't see the second one. Okay. I got to send you pictures. Um, yeah, I don't know hundred percent of all the story, but, um, uh, 300 and something yards, I think is what it was. And oh, dang. 10 yards and down drop time old. He's an old mule deer. Super well, that's old. what that, that Super little old. flyer makes him super uh cool when, when, yeah. did he know he was there surely he knew he was there uh the mule deer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah. but it's like because that's that's when you don't quite mistake no no it, it, he was an old wise wise buck that's for sure and big body and then the one his son shot the next or that evening i think maybe uh even bigger body younger but his spread was massive so yeah. I'll, I'll have to send you a picture of that one so. so what ammo was he using on the on the uh hand he was hand loads hand loads which one what was it uh was it come on 68 green match match burner oh Barnes bullet. interesting dude those Barnes. things are those things are accurate man interesting and, and that's not even a solid copper bullet so what speeds uh the 60 i think he was at 34 or something yeah it's pretty awesome yeah Man, we've been at, getting asked a lot, and we're trying to do something with the, um, I guess, a, a CX bullet, something that's 70 grain. Because, I mean, California, we're getting asked for uh, copper. Yep. You know, and it's it's coming. So, yeah. trying to figure out how to get something across the finish line to to do that. But, yeah, man, I'm, that same week, it was pretty. Good. I'm going to be getting some bullets here. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Maguire Ballistics at all. I've been following your Instagram. Okay. 
they're they have uh, uh, a a two two four 224 diameter bullet that they're testing right now in uh, 22 Creed. So as soon as he tells me that they're uh, good to go, I'm going to be running them. I, um, I, I think you would have a hard time in an 18-inch barrel stabilizing, but I think in, in this one right here, zero problem, I think. So So if you like the longer barrel. Yes, and I got Amaxes to stabilize out of this. Okay, and okay. Re remember where I, I, I mean, yeah. A-tips. I couldn't, I mean, A-tips. I couldn't get it in the 18-inch barrel. So yep. it did make a difference. So, so 90, 90 grain A-tips? Yep, 90 grain A-tips at Interesting. 80 feet above sea level. So Nice. Yep. So yeah, awesome. no, I uh, love the wombat action. I mean, the other action, the the vandals are awesome, but man, this thing is so smooth. <laughs> oh, we've got a great video coming out this week. You'll have to, you'll appreciate it. The the only questions we always get on the wombat or will it freeze up in the snow because of the openings and uh, will it handle the sand? So, what we, <laughs> we did a take your wombat to the beach. Uh, style video kind of funnily packing it for a sand and showed how it's still uh actually the ports really kind of fluffed out the sand which is which is pretty awesome so right it's been been a good one yeah no same same week that you sent me the mule deer picture about two days later i get a picture from a guy coos deer hunting in arizona okay. with a get this 18 inch uh it was a venatic carbon uh 22 cream worm. 80 grain match bullets, factory factory ammo. His wife shot a mule or uh, shot a coos deer at 912 yards. <laughs> that's the same face I'm in. I was like, "Whoa, that's amazing!" That's a shot. But uh, that is a heck of a shot. Oh, there um, must not have been I, much wind. That is what happened. I haven't seen it yet, but okay. supposedly it's it's filmed. Um, I've seen the picture. The picture looks awesome. Yeah, and. Uh, I also have kind of a hard, like, uh, because it was a guy that we were supposed to go with, but I didn't draw this year. Uh, so I'm gotcha. like, dang. Well, tell me a little bit. So talking about McGuire Ballistics, anybody who follows your Instagram sees yep. you've been playing with those. So I, what's the scoop on those bullets? Um, Solid copper bullet. They do a kind of a, a hunting bullet. They're out of California. Um, and they're, I believe, come from an aerospace background for machining and got into making solid copper bullets because he's, Sam, he's a guide for Southern California and Northern California. And when that, you know, their band hit for no, no lead bullets, he's like, I want to get into this and figure out a good way to make a good bullet. And they're accurate. I'm going to tell you right now, um, I've been shooting sevens and 30 cals. Uh, I have not found a charge that in that seven PRC from you guys that shoots under a half, I mean, over a half inch, five shots, five That's shots. Awesome. And that's on a that's on a carbon barrel. Yep. Um, that's awesome. I know I sent you a picture of the one. With yeah. Same same group, same whole group. So a one sixty eight grain going twenty eight. I think it was twenty eight seventy two average out of that rifle, which is fast for that for uh tw twenty two inch barrel. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Twenty two inch barrel. Yep. Twenty two inch barrel. So that's um that's 100, 150 feet on the Hornady the ammo. The the ELDX. So what powder? Um, I am using Ramshot Grand. Ramshot oh, Grand, what? dude. This powder right here. I'm telling you. There you go. For a ball powder, it's stable, and you get great velocity. You almost can't even fill your case enough to get to see pressures. So you're so in in seven PRC, six five PRC so far, been fantastic. It's blown my mind. So. So what turns you so in in your world you're you're reloading all the time man I love watching when you're filming <laughs> when you your your uh, Instagram videos where you're filling the cups or the bottles full of yeah. primers <laughs> oh, oh right here <laughs> what, yeah. 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 So, yeah yeah so what are you up to just this year how many rounds do you think you've shot um well so I I'm roughly I I was at twenty twenty two thousand with pistol oh God. so. <laughs> We were, you know, it's funny. We got a we got a chance to tour a, a big ammo manufacturer that I won't mention here, um, not too long ago, and I thought it was really interesting that they were were they were talking about making older lead for their their bullets come from re recycled car batteries. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, which I thought was super cool. I'm like, oh, recycling and yeah. and um, 
my brother, uh, uh, who's really not a big, not big into shooting, a different brother, not not the one that works with us here. And okay. He goes, huh? I never really thought about that. If you think about recycled car batteries, and then they get shot at that rate, they still end up outside somewhere. <laughs> so it's just like yep. I never really thought about it from that uh, from that perspective. So yeah, um, just interesting to know that that's where they end up with uh, or end up. You know, yeah, like it's, it's twenty two pretty... thousand. Man, that's amazing. Yeah, I I mean I've shot a lot this year. Um, I've done a lot. I mean I primers have killed me. Um, but, uh, <laughs> primer cost, ouch. Um, but I've done a lot more rifle testing, I think this year than I've ever done through calibers, you know, from, you know, 17 fireball, I'm all the way up into 50 BMG right now. So Ooh, you're doing 50 right now. Yeah. What are you testing on the 50? So, so I've been shooting some of the, the, the Hornady a tips, but, uh, okay. I have, um, an old, uh, uh, McMillan from the eighties, 50 single feed. 50 and uh just been playing That's with awesome. that so yeah and is that for an article or is that just because you felt like it no uh, it's because i felt like it yeah <laughs> um, eventually i mean um i've got a cousin that's got a, a barrett that i might oh, yeah. do an article on um he told me anytime i want so i may may have to hit up seth for some some ammo for that so there um, you go um but uh yeah no it's eventually i'll do an article but i mean like you don't hunt with it right i mean so like you know my main my main stuff is going to be coming from the hunting side right um and hand loading for hunting so i haven't figured out how to get an angle on that yet but I, i'll i'll figure it out did you ever finish your article on the 86 i i have it's 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 in i it just got to get published that all right now it, tell me yeah go ahead what do you think um, <laughs> the 86 versus the the uh un, 338 arc is a big deal right now unbiased opinion um my unbiased opinion, the, the 338 ARC is, I haven't shot the ARC yet. I really want to, but I think it is a better subsonic cartridge. Just looking at it. Uh, if you want to shoot supers, I think the 86 is better because you got way more cases capacity, right? Yep. But uh, the 338 ARC lets you shoot different bullets where the 86 doesn't. I know because I have sent bullets down barrels and ruined barrels so far. Thank goodness no cans were on. Um, it's just, uh, it's also, it's also a hard car cartridge date six to get to perform accurate consistently. Uh, but I did get really good luck with some cutting edge bullets and mm -hmm. some discrete ballistics bullets. Both of those I've had fantastic results. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I think if you're going to do the, the eight, six and you want to tinker in with a bolt gun it runs supers and subs, it's a great way. But if you're mainly thinking that you're going to run subs, which I really think that's what the cartridge should be ran for, yeah. would be the 338 ARC. And you can get it yeah. in an AR-15 platform. I mean, AR-10s are too dang heavy. I mean, nobody yeah. wants to run around with an AR-10. So, yeah. But. I mean, you know, the interesting thing about the, because we, we haven't, we haven't had to play the subsonic game much on the bolt gun side, right? Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to sort of watch, but I kind of, you know, have been following this sort of, I don't know, bicker back and forth about those two particular calibers, right? And trying to figure out if the, you know, if you're going to build one that has to do both, like what is the proper twist rate to, so you don't do what you're talking about? Not you one don't get three. something messed up. Not right? one in three. Um, I think, so, I think if you're going to hunt 350 yards in with a solid copper bullet between 300 and 350 gram bullet, run a one in three twist. So it, it does help with that rotation that will help, help drive through that energy. I mean, because I shot, with a cutting edge bullet uh at it was 1080 leaving the muzzle at 300 yards and i still had actually the shank is right here shanks are right here can't quite see, yeah, there you go <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> 42 inches of penetration at 300 yards yep 42 inches 42 inches man that's crazy and and, and i was i was about to kind of make fun of and that's it like 1080 feet a second yep yep <laughs> i mean the drop is i mean you're mortaring i mean you're completely mortaring that thing in there but when That's it impacts crazy. man it it uh and you know the cutting edge bullet it just sheds its pedals right and so it's just gone explodes right you know does its job with leaving and then that shank carries through um huh. but uh it was pretty impressive so so changing gears a little mm -hmm. bit what uh, um I know you got a seven PRC and mm -hmm. shooting it a lot. It looks like this gun's super accurate. Yep. What's your 
is this your first kind of run at, at really diving deep into the 7 PRC or have you shot the 7 PRC before? No, I've got a Ruger American and I've got a Kelblees and I've got yours uh, from you cool. guys. Um, so I've played with the 7 PRC quite a bit. Yep. So what's your thoughts? Uh, it's a fantastic cartridge. Um, I I love the 143 to 170, really, the bullet weight. Um, it's very easy to load for, not finicky. Uh, your velocities are great. It hangs right in there with a 7 rim mag. The twist rate, right, is obviously faster than the 7 rim mag. So if you wanted to, you could throw a heavier, longer bullet in there. Um, but if you're a hand loader, my opinion, you're better off going with a 7 PRC because you're not dealing with a belt. You can actually, you know, there's dies that make it so you can all the way full, full go down in size all the way on that piece of brass. Because I know some people get clickers right from that. Um, I found a way to eliminate that by doing that. Um, Wait, discuss that a little bit for me when you talk about getting clickers. Um, so for guys that are unfamiliar, give us a little education here. Okay, so I, I, I think you know. But um, so... With, with some of the 7 PRCs, the 6.5 PRCs, the brass, for some reason, likes to grow quite a bit, and then especially in the chamber. And when you go to release your bolt, sometimes it gets real sticky on the chamber. And when you go to release your bolt, sometimes it gets real sticky, and, and it'll click, right? Well, um, well, for everybody, I guess, today. No, this was great. This is oh. great, because it might. Eric you may Cort be about to solve a problem that we've been playing with. Eric Cortina, <laughs> third their die this die right here it's actually an expanding mandrel die but the brass okay. and i also i have a press here my short action press here the brass will go all the way up in and size it sizes the whole piece of brass all the way down to the body and it is eliminated i have not since i've done this i have not had a clicker problem i'm not saying that's going to do that for everybody but so far that has uh, completely eliminated i full length size my my brass with my expander ball out and then I go in and do this with the expander mandrel in for the size that I want for my neck tension. And I've had zero problems and the accuracy has been fantastic. So. Okay. So question then, mm -hmm. this, this may solve a problem that I've been playing with. Um, you're talking like what we call a machine gun bulge, the very bottom where the, mm -hmm. the webbing of the case is. Okay. Yes. And, and you, and you've seen that work with six, five PRC. Correct. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm writing this down. You sold me. Well, uh, and it may we also be the, the press combo <laughs> here too. So I have not tried it on any of my other presses. Okay. The short action press goes down and sizes all the way down at the shell plate. And so it, it allows for that. Otherwise you may have to just machine a piece of, you know, uh, you know, it, there's a lot of variables, but so far that has been, I've been eliminated. I'm going to try that because we, two things we're running into. I think, I think, you know, I run a seven by six, five PRC. Yep. I started that before the seven came out. And so I, I just have a hard time uh, changing because I love short mags and just yeah. been the thing. Right. Um, and then we started to try and play with the uh, 25 in a PRC. And what ultimately made us not go any further was exactly what you're talking about. As we started getting, um, what I'm going to call real velocities, mm -hmm. we were getting pressures and, and that case kept swelling and then it was just, you know, a pain to reload. So it's basically bul bulging like at the bottom, right? So kind of, yep. so Glocks and, you know, and Glocks um, on a 40 cal uh, unsupported chamber on the bottom, right? So it bulges mm -hmm. on that. So Lee has a thing where you run it up through there and takes that bulge out of there. That's kind of essentially kind of what this is doing. Hmm, interesting. So, yeah. I did not know Cortina was doing that. I, I don't know if it's designed that way, but it works. So um, I, love it. I, I, I love just it. noticed since I've switched to that and switched to on this press, it, it's I no longer have that problem. So, so why the light bullets on the seven millimeter? You're talking about the 140 range. I mean, you can get some straight speed out of that. So um, the, the McGuire Bullet Six I've been I've used so far. It's kind of what I hunted with. It's my buddy shot his bear with. This is a 143 grain uh, solid copper rose uh, bullet, and it you're pushing at pretty good speed. It's pretty flat. And for hunting distances, um, really, you don't need to worry about the wind too much. So you don't have to get your BC up too crazy high. 500 yards and in, it's hold hair and go. So, Interesting. yeah. Interesting. What kind of BCs are in the, in the solid coppers like that? Are they low or are they? Um, so the 168 is 750 for a G1. Yeah, pretty good. Okay. Um, okay. and I cannot remember, I cannot remember the 143. Oh. I want to say the 143 is in the low five. 
And when you when you shot it at distance, this holds to that BC. Yes. Yep. Oh dang. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, <clears throat> maybe I, somebody need to track it. I've always kind of poo pooed on the uh, the copper bullets. <laughs> yeah, I do want to get the. I think Caldwell has a chronograph now that will measure your BC. Um, so oh, I'm I'm curious in that. I I, uh, I use the Garmin so much. I'm like, well, do I really want to spend another six hundred dollars on another another chronograph? I'm just like, we'll see. But I think if I'm going to do yeah. some testing on, you know, the BC, because they say it will measure it, right? So I'm curious. So that's going to be something I'm going to have to look into down the road. I'll have to look at that one. Yeah, no, because, man, we, we just got the Garmin. And, of course, got the Garmin watch. Mm-hmm. And that thing is amazing. We, like, literally turn it on, set it out in the field, yep. and all of a sudden it's like, do you want to pair with your watch? And I'm like, yeah. sure, why not? Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, this is it's pretty crazy. And yeah. for, the, for the money, like, I think everybody should just, if you're doing, especially if you're doing what you're doing, reloading or you're or like setting up multiple guns or just testing yep. stuff, like, it's just so convenient. Oh, yeah. I just go to the range. I hook it up to my iPad and I can literally just like, OK, this is the 7PRC. This is this load. This is the 22 Creedmoor, this load. Right. And it just goes through and I can save it all and then print it to Excel spreadsheet if I wanted to. And uh, it, it's it's a they did very well on that advice. That's awesome. So keep it on the trend of reloading. I want to ask you mm-hmm. some random reloading questions here that have been stuff that have been in my mind. But at the same time, stuff I think we, we hear a lot. And I'm curious what your uh, what your thoughts are. Small rifle. Versus large rifle primer, accuracy wise. You see much difference? Accuracy wise, no. I do see it in the standard deviations. Um, so in theory, longer range, it should, it should, it should play into that. Uh, my thing is, is I want to make sure my powder's burnt all the way. That's my main thing. Um, I don't want to make sure my powder's burnt before it leaves the barrel, so it's not pepper in the back of my bullet affecting accuracy. Um, so I want to make sure I get a good consistent burn. Um, I really, so when I played with, for the 22 Creedmoor, for instance, um, with large and small, I had better results with large for accuracy. Now I did have, uh, I, I believe it was a little bit better on standard deviation and extreme spread, but it was so negligible that, I mean, the accuracy outweighed what I was seeing. So you think that was because of the powder you were using with the 22 Creed, or you think be. that's just interesting? Yep. It could be. Interesting. Yeah, we're trying, I'm trying to figure this out. We're, we're, we're thinking about doing another load or another run of the Texas Ammo mm-hmm. um, 22 Creed more, which we've been talking about on the forums, and we've got all the components for it, but uh, running into a little bit of an issue trying to mass load Reloader 26 and getting it in without bridging. <laughs> is uh becoming complicated so we've yeah. talked with the guys over at hornady a little bit and we've modified one of the powder funnels and i think what we're going to end up going with is just having to do a double pour basically okay. to, to try and eliminate that but any any thoughts on because uh, reloader 26 man it's like That's i got a, I, I was able to secure about 200 pounds of oh. it so, well so i need to start to do talking this to you more often oh <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had really good luck. I mean, I know it's not Reloader 26, but I had really good luck with, N, you know, Triple Nickel, uh, Vid Vorti Pie, yeah. um, and 22 Creed. I also, N560. Uh, um, and then there was a couple of ball powders I had really good luck. Um, and there was a couple of Shooter's World powders I had really good luck with. Um, but I know you want to get a good speed out of it. And so, therefore, yeah. yeah. And fi- yeah, I don't know. Like, it's tough because, well, I mean, for one, just loading uh stick powder into case volume is just kind of a pain anyways and it's kind of a pain to get it to be accurate every single time so therefore you know your consistency on your ammo is going to be a little tougher so so we've got we've secured seventeen thousand and fifty pieces of brass okay so that's that's as much as we're running i just gotta get i gotta get uh seventeen thousand of them right okay then, what uh, uh what, what brand is it hornady or is it no, so uh, it was kind of an interesting deal. We we get asked a lot for to do another run about ammo, and I know that ammo was pretty hot relative to where you know the the uh, Sammy ended up being and everything. And I think that I think that equates to why people are seeing a little more accuracy with it is because it's just fast, and I think it's getting stable quicker. And uh, and so it's Peterson, and Peterson ended up basically hollering and saying or you know reaching out, and they had. 17,020 pieces of small okay. rifle primer. Okay. And so it's, it's a small rifle primer too. So we're going to see, okay. 
how we can get this thing to to work on a limited run. Well, maybe I'll uh, I'll do some testing too and let you know. So I got some Reloader yeah, Twenty Six, and I got some. Uh, oh, I don't know if it's small. If it's Peterson Small, it must be. Yeah, and it's got to be Peterson because I think they're the only ones that did small, small rifle, right? Brass. Yep. Okay, so then I, I do. I believe so. And it, and and I haven't really uh, I haven't really messed with them to be totally honest on mm -hmm. the twenty two. Okay, we've used the on the twenty five because that's uh -huh. all you could get. Uh huh. Right. So which I I need we'll one, I, I need a twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, we got we got some stuff working on the twenty five. I, yeah. I we've made some pretty big advancements last week. Uh, on some big stuff, maybe on the twenty five. Did you? Okay, right on. Okay, that's exciting. So, cool. I am. I am excited to see kind of where that goes. The, the hardest thing, though, it's it's interesting because I love the nostalgia of a twenty five. Right. Mm -hmm. I love. I love the fact that it like actually. I'm going to offend some people here, but it's like a real cartridge relative to like a Roberts or like you know. But the you know, modern cartridge. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. so. I think the, the 134, that bullet's a really cool bullet. Yep. We've had some customers shoot elk, and we had a good buddy of mine shoot, shot mule deer and everything with them. And the interesting thing is it performs well, it does well on the you know the NRL and the competitions and that kind of stuff. But what's really hard for me personally is I love how fast the 22 Creedmoor is. So if the deer walks 40 yards, meh, you know, you're still, you're still not worried about ranging it. We're like... The slower cartridges, you really just you gotta have to know exactly where that thing is standing. And yep. I like the margin of error, but 22 gives me over the 25. But some cases you just can't, you know, you just yeah. can't use the, the, the 22 for mule deer and elk. So, yeah, I can't right now. So that's the reason I'm I'm thinking, you know, I want to I, I want a 25 because I would love to get a, a good mule deer with a 25. Well, we've got a couple in stock, so we may have to do some shimmying around on some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> You're giving me a thumbs up. I can see that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, we sent one out to uh, Joseph, uh, JBV, Joseph Von, what is it? Man? Benedict, yeah. Oh, I always get his name on. Yeah, Benedict. Yeah. And uh, he's doing a write-up on one, just did a video. Thought it was kind of cool. He actually saw, thought this was interesting. This will be back to that reloading question. We were using, I believe it was the uh, triple nickel is where we started. A little bit slow in the 25. Yeah. Um, but here was the weirdest thing. The rifle we sent him multiple groups without the suppressor on it. And he said the gun would shoot around the point eights, right? Point eight to maybe one, one and a quarter, not bad, but not what we you know expect our guns to shoot. And then he called me and said, when he puts the suppressor on it, he shot five groups in a row, uh, five shot groups that were all in like the three tenths. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so just interesting that the suppressor made that gun that much more accurate. What have you seen messing with cans and not cans, especially when you're really loading all these different kinds of powder? In my opinion, a can makes a shooter better. Interesting. Okay. Um, it takes a lot of the recoil out. It takes the sound out. Um, I mean, he's a great shooter, so don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying right. it's, it's right, him right. shooting. But um, in my experience, like, it like you take a youth shooter, put him behind a rifle that doesn't have a can, and then put him on a rifle that does have a can. He's gonna shoot a lot better. There's yeah. any anybody in general. So I think that you know shooting is a lot to do with mental, and so it follow through. It helps, and so that's my opinion. Um, I I can go shoot like your this twenty two crude right here, right? I'll go shoot it, but and the other thing is, is this rifle. Point of impact with a can on it does not change. Period. Did not That's change in Africa. Here. Did not change in Africa and did not change with this can. It's the only rifle I've ever had that happened with. So period. It's got some, it's got some magic in it, man. I, well, it killed eleven <laughs> or what, nine animals, whatever it was. So yeah, it did just fine. Um, but uh, yeah, no. Um, I guess where I'm going is is the rifle shoots just for this rifle in general shoots just as good with a can or without the can hand loads, factory yeah. loads, just in general. Um, I have never noticed an, a rifle shoot better or worse, depending on whatever's on the end of the barrel. Yeah. There is a group of people that think that you can tune it by turning the weights and all kinds of stuff. I'm not one of those. Um, I feel it just adds a little bit of weight to the rifle. It makes the shooter more comfortable. That's, yeah. I guess just my opinion, you know. So well, I was just wondering, like the, the interesting thing, 
about, you know, kind of his feedback, which I thought was fascinating. And to me, what I started thinking was, I'm curious if it's powder related, right? More? You know, if, di if different powders that back pressure helps, and maybe it doesn't, yeah. but I just thought that was something interesting. Uh, you well, know, I really want, I want to see if we change powders for that rifle, if we could, you know, uh, tune it up without, without the can. One thing could be too, is if it's not fully burning in a, how, yeah. how long is the barrel? It's a 22 inch barrel. Okay. So say it's not fully burning throughout that 22 inch barrel. Yeah. That can's giving it a little extra room to burn maybe, or it's taking, maybe, or, or it's taking out the, the, what I was talking about, peppering the end of the bullet, which will yep. affect accuracy. Um, so that, that could be the, that could be correlating to it too, for sure. Huh. <laughs> that's a term that I've not heard. I want to, uh, that's, I'm going to look at, look at that a little bit. Yeah. That's a, you're the first person I've heard that from. So that's, that's interesting. Oh, really? Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to ask another reloading question because it's on my mind. Yep. And then we may circle back around to something else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, annealing. Yes. Every time I turn on anything to do with, uh, it seems like every time I turn on social media, I'm getting bombarded by new ways to anneal. Uh, pro con. Do you, do you anneal over everything? Every single time. Really? Every single time. Yep. It's such a little unique, unique, I can't say the right word, but minute part of reloading and it takes no time. Um, it's something that's going to make your brass life a heck of a lot longer, right? I mean, if you're paying, you know, $2 for a piece of brass and you only get three firings out of it, that stinks. You know, neck splits, something like that. Not only that, but yeah. every time you fire it and then run it through your, you know, your, your press, it's work hardening. And brass also has memory. It springs back. So if you take it and kneel it, it helps soften that. You get it to, I think it's 700 Fahrenheit, some of that. It's, Interesting. And then it helps, it helps with it. Also, it also will help big time with neck tension. Uh, I've done a lot of testing with it. Um, you you wonder why I shoot? Tw I'm at twenty two thousand rounds. Well, last like so last year I I did primer testing with four thousand rounds of different primers, seating depth. Well, this year I did a ton of testing. <laughs> this year I did a ton of testing with annealing versus non annealing. And okay, I annealed. I uh, shot, and then I annealed on every third, or I shot and did all this. So I have like, I have tons of data on all that and in my my finding that it affects your groups it affects um, standard deviation it affects all of that so that's awesome so in terms of did you do any youtube videos about the annui i have not yet i'm working i have okay. to go i'm trying to decide if i'm going to do um a basically a really in-depth article yet or if i'm going to do uh, a huge video series on it um i'm doing a huge video series on 30-06 and so I'm thinking. Oh about no way! I, I, I've got 86 different, uh, 86 different bullets that I'm gonna be testing in a Remington 700. No so way! I may be maybe calling you for a barrel. Um, All right, so hang on, let's 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 stop for a second there. So it's so funny. I literally just got off a call this morning, uh, and we had a rep out in the southeast okay. asking for normal calibers, yeah. and and 30 out six came up. Mm -hmm. So what what uh what made you want to do a, a, a Big 30 out of six testing. I did a poll, okay? Out of everybody on my Instagram and YouTube, I said, what are the calibers you guys want to see tested in real life hunting scenarios for velocity, accuracy in a, you know, not budget, but a, a normal a normal style rifle, Remington 700. Yeah. Everybody has a Remington 700, right? Mm -hmm. And so a Remington 700 ADL, right? And so they... I said, here's the here, you know, here's the options that I'm willing to test because I'm not gonna six eight western. I'm not interested in. Um, there's a couple of stuff I'm just not interested in um, that I just did not want to play with. So give them option: two eighty AI, two seventy, thirty out six, three hundred wind mag, and three oh eight. And they picked thirty out six, and it was like almost eighty five percent thirty out six. Really, over the even over the three oh eight. Yep. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So what, uh, well, let me back into two things here. Mm -hmm. One. So when you start doing these video series, tell us like, where can people find you to find this content? Okay. What's the best so way you got, to... you got reloading quest on Instagram and YouTube. And then I just started a actual website reloading quest. Hey. Dot com. Yep. Yep. When did that happen? I'm pretty sure I sent you a link, but it might've been when you were hunting in, uh, uh, your elk hunting. 
Oh, well, then I've been, I didn't get anything. I was focused. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I try not to bug you too. Um, so, oh, you're good. You're good. Um, no, yeah. You're so good. no, I got a website up and so I'll, I'm going to have, um, articles on there for, you know, anywhere from, you know, gear review from like 400 words to, to 2000 stuff. Um, all my Ooh. YouTube stuff is on there. Um, brands that I recommend will be on there. So cat needs to get me a logo for you guys. Yeah. Um, and a link. I just got one from a couple other people I'm going to be throwing on there. Um, and I'm also, anything that I write that's going to go in magazines, after a year, I can take that and publish it on my website. So there that's going to be going there too. So I'm trying to just get out a little bit more. Um, and there's also a forum on there that I want people to get in there and start talking about hand loading, reloading, hunting, um, cartridges. Um, I As we get more and more restricted on other platforms, and hopefully that might change a little bit with the direction that election maybe i don't know i just want <laughs> maybe watch something on censoring all kinds of stuff anyways but maybe that might change but um i wanted to start that website and i thought that it's a good way to do it and um it's a good way for me to like advertise or not advertise but talk about stuff like for you guys like um for for horizon or mcguire ballistics it's stuff that i can just get out there and do you know anywhere from a 500 to a 1500 word article and just get it out there and don't have to worry about pu publishing because when I go to through publish, it goes, you know, it's usually three months, it goes through editing, all kinds of stuff. And this, I can just get out and yeah. kind of be my own thing. So, so you're going full sin influencer. Uh, you know, yeah. And I still have a, <laughs> still have a 60 hour a week job. <laughs> but, I, love it. I, love I don't know. I, I not necessarily in, I, you know, that, that word influencer, but, um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, you know, it's tough because the whole reason I started my YouTube channel, right, was because I wanted to talk about and share what I like to do. Reloading, shooting, it relaxes me, right? Hunting. And uh, my YouTube's done pretty well. You know, my writing's done pretty well. And I was like, well, why don't I just combine all that stuff? And there's a place where people can go and find everything at one spot if they wanted to, right? Yeah. It's kind of what I was thinking. And then, then my 3D printing stuff, you know, that's all linked on there too. So, like, my ammo trays, all that stuff. Um, I got it. By the way, you're getting a Garmin box in the mail soon. Also, Let's go. you're also going to get a 22 Creedmoor loading tray. Heck like this. yeah. So Dude, I didn't know you did that. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So I, I know you don't hand load much anymore, but uh, you'll still get one. Well, you'll love this. So we, um, we, we were doing a big, you know, kind of clean up here at, at the facility and going through so much stuff. And so, uh, we came to our reloading step and we, and we don't reload a, a bunch, uh, we just, you know, with the, with the 22 project, we just hadn't ha haven't had to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with some new stuff coming out, like the 25 and we kind of playing around with it. And so we're like, well, you know, as a company, we don't, we don't want or don't need this reloading stuff. And so I basically, I, I bought back our reloading stuff, mm -hmm. uh, personally, because it was, you know, it was part of my stuff when we, you know, merge the company and all that. So, so it's always been part of the company stuff, but I have it, I have it set up at the house now. And it is the original rock chucker press that my grandmother gave to me in 1997. Right on. Uh, and so I'm, I'm starting to be like, all right. And I got everything set out. I got the yeah. pattern set out, got it all figured out. So uh, my wife was, we were talking about it uh, last weekend. And so she's like, you really need it. Cause my, my oldest boy, we kind of taught him. And so my youngest boy, he's only five, but man, he is obsessed, obsessed, obsessed with guns awesome. and really, really like cowboy stuff. So yeah. I made him a leather gun holster this weekend. And so I may, may get him into, uh, or at least show him kind of how you make, okay. make real bullets. So. Right on. That's awesome. But no, I very much appreciate it, man. Yeah. And we've got a new website coming out. Hopefully we get this thing launched, uh, this Friday. It might be Monday before we get it okay. done, but well, it's yeah, a just big get, feat. Get me, uh, like a hyperlink that you want for it. Yeah. And uh a logo and I'll get that on there. And awesome, then uh, yeah. That. And hopefully hopefully you've been selling some moving some guns. I've had a lot of people tell me that they've bought guns. So Dude, I will tell you it has been we've been blessed. And uh, in a time that we know we just gave a presentation about this and I don't mean this to sound yeah. in any kind of uh any kind of bragging way, but we've been truly, truly blessed this year. We uh we know the industry in a lot of areas. We've got competitors that are 50, 60 percent down. Yeah. Um, you know, we got a call from one of the biggest buying groups in our space and said, "Hey, what have you done to put the fire on this thing?" I was like, "I don't know. What are we talking about?" And he said, "You're up like three hundred and fifty-five percent." 
the the twenty two Creed. I thought this was cool. Uh, twi- uh, Hornady share with us. The twenty two Creed more this year is up eight hundred and eighty seven percent over last year, which is great, right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's a lot of. And, and we've uh, and we were we were looking. We've put about close to. Well, I'm gonna say close to two million rounds of ammo into the into the market this yeah. year. Um, and so we've got more of it coming. Hopefully we can get the California guys taken care of with some coppers and, yeah. and then I, maybe we can do something similar again. And I'll tell you yeah, what, man, I've got some stuff. Yeah. I, uh, you know, if I could hunt, I, I would literally shoot anything in this state that I, I could hunt besides elk with this, with this cartridge, yep. um, after doing what we did in Africa, a hundred percent faith in the cartridge. Um, it's awesome. 37 yards to 512 yards and a 26 mile an hour wind. <laughs> I shot a, yep. you know, plus bucket, 500, 512 and 26. And it, I incredibly, in factory ammo, no hand loads. So yep. they just hammer. You guys build good rifles. They shoot well. The ammo shoots well. And the cartridge is, it's not so much slept on anymore, I don't think. I mean, I know a lot of guys that's, they're turning into their main varmint rifle that live around here. Because that's really all we can hunt with in Washington. Maybe that might change eventually. I don't know. But I'm really to the point where I'm not going to be doing much hunting here in this state anymore. I'm I'm going to be ven- <laughs> I'm going to be venturing out. This was literally the worst it. year for hunting for me in this state ever. Yep. Um. So Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Florida. Come on down. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> you tell me when, and I'll be there to shoot pigs. You tell me when. Hey there. Man, you know, and the crazy, the crazy thing about pigs, the places I hunt, I don't have them like everybody thinks okay. about uh, in Texas. But uh, it's one of those like love hates. We had uh, had some pigs tearing up our home, like my home place this yeah. year, uh, and it ended up shooting one boar. And I think that one boar was responsible for the whole. It was a whole giant mess. Well, my, that was, that my was dog. A, that I, was a bullet well spent then. Oh my goodness, dude! And it was. It, <laughs> I'll tell the story a second. It's one of those tell on your stories. It's like three o'clock in the morning. I've got a, a, a blood trailing G, uh, German short hair pointer, but I'd left out that night and uh, we didn't have him kindled up. And he's all of a sudden just banging like crazy outside of our window. And I'm like, oh my gosh, stupid dog, you know? So I go out there and of course I grab between two cream one with a thermal and I look and I'm like, no way. He's got this pig like fade up in the middle of the pasture. Of course, I'm like, I'm like half asleep in my boxers. I grab a pair of like slippers, you know, and uh, run out there and he holds the pig till I get about 50 yards from him. And I actually double tap this thing with the X's and he, you know, you could hear him. He's cool. Cool. He just sucked him up. And, uh, you know, I don't know. He went maybe a hundred yards, but after that, no more tearing up the pasture. It was great. (laughs) But anyway, that's cool. Well, cool, man. Anyways. Well, anything else exciting you got kicking besides the website? Um, not really. Right, second, I, I leave for Florida tomorrow. Um, taking oh, the take, taking the kids to Disney World, but that's okay. You know, that's a little different. Um, I thought you were gonna say you were doing some iguana hunting. Oh, I, I wish I want, you dude, on I want an alligator. That's on my list. There you, there you go. I, I wish. No, nah, this I've spent a lot of time hunting this year, so I just figured I need to do some family time. So, cool. yeah, cool. but uh. Other than that, um, you know, I'm just working away on a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, like I said, you know, I've, um, that 30 out six, you know, project I'm going to work on, um, 88 different bullets. I'm going to test. That's not even powders. It's just 88 different bullets. And so that's going to be, it just shows you though, like the versatility of 30 cows, Yep, man, it is, it is hard to beat that. It really is a hundred grain up to two thirty. Yep. The question is from a, for a rifle manufacturer like ourselves, and I love for people to comment below. Is there any reason that Horizon should consider like a throwback 270, 30 out of six, 243, we'll right? Sell. All, all three of those will sell. Yeah. I'll buy one. So, I'll tell know. you right now. I'll buy one. <laughs> <laughs> so we may, you may see us, uh, we may have to do a hat tip. And, and uh, my first gun was a 30 out of six, yeah, old same. Ruger, you know, yep. still have it. Yep. So. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. No, I, uh, yeah, maybe I, maybe I just need to do is have you guys do me a custom 30 out six for me. I just saw that one for the, you guys, you made for Steve. Oh my gosh. That rifle's beautiful. Isn't that wild? Oh man. That is awesome. That was cool. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, that was a really fun to see him come and, uh, 
he didn't know it was here, right? Uh -huh. So he came to see us about some other stuff, and then we surprised him with that. And it was uh, neat because he had his son with him, you know, and we yeah. kind of a 75th anniversary present, uh, you know, them being a fifth, well, I guess they're third generation, about to be fourth generation, um, you know, Rand company. I think that's really cool. So, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. Well, but anyways, well, man, I, I appreciate want to tell you thank you real quick. Oh. Best time of my life in Africa. Appreciate it. Um, Absolutely, man. Fantastic gun, fantastic time. It was just, uh, I am beyond blessed, um, more than you'll ever know. So, oh, that's awesome, man. I, no, I enjoyed it. I'm curious where you're gonna put all this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, got... I, I have a father in law that has a huge shop, and as of right now, that's where it's going. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, I got an email yesterday. It was like, Mr. Ratliff, uh, how, how do you want your trophies? I'm like, oh, shoot, I gotta yeah. start thinking about that, right? Yeah. You know, so that's a uh, that's awesome, man. No, I, I appreciate you coming, dude. It was fun, and Seth and I was always I already been in his ear a little bit. Is like, what does twenty five with a twenty five look like? Oh, think about that for a second. Yeah. So I, we'll see. Uh, see what we can get done there. Yeah, Sable. Sable. Get and of course. Done. Oh, there you go. Well, and of course, uh, you know, we all. Well, you you're gonna make it out the shot show. Oh yeah, I'll be there. Yep. Cool. Yep. Well, I think we're going to do another uh, another influencer get together okay. at okay. Shot Show. We may end up doing a couple. And then I've got, as soon as we finish this thing up, I've got uh, a couple of things been your ear about that we yep. can't talk about on air right yeah, now yeah. that I think is going to be some fun stuff coming out in 2025 that'll be okay. neat for the industry and uh, looking forward to it quite yep. a bit. But okay. man, Zach, I appreciate you being on this episode of yep. On the Horizon. Be sure, guys, and like and comment below. Let us know some of your reloading questions. Be sure and check out Quest for the perfect load and uh, Zach's website. Zach, what was that again? Reloading Quest. Reloading Quest. Be sure and check out ReloadingQuest.com. Shoot him your reloading questions because I'm not the reloading expert. This guy has done way more reloading than this guy has. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes to the 7PRC stuff, check out his Instagram and the, the Vanatic Carbon that he's testing. Pretty darn impressive with the 7PRC results. But until next time, guys, we appreciate it. We'll catch you later.